In this lesson, we're going to have a look at the construction and interpretation of graphs and charts. Right, so what is a graph? A graph is usually a simple relationship between two variables. So for example, I can draw a very simple little graph to show the relationship between the number of trees and the number of birds' nests. And we may, for example, say, right, let's take 10, 20, and 40 trees per hectare. And we could then count the number of trees on a hectare of land and find what it is. Let's say we find 12, and for those 12, we find 10 birds' nests. So we would then have a point there. Then we might count 27 trees and find say 20 bird's nests and then we might count 35 trees and find if there is 30 this would be about 35. So we now have a small data set and a number of trees. Now we can't join these lines and say well this is a straight line relationship because also there's going to be a limit to the number of trees we can put on one hectare. And there may be an increasing relationship, there may be a decreasing relationship. So we would need to know more information before we can go further. But there's a lot to be learned from this simple graph. First of all, we need to be fairly strict about how we lay it out. We must always have the units, trees per hectare, number of birds' nests, um, and that of course would also be per hectare. And then we label our axes correctly. We um, put an arrow there to show it's increasing in that direction. And strictly speaking, we should always start at the zero point, or the zero should be shown. You may ask, where do I put the trees? Where do I put the bird's nests? Why don't I put it the other way around? Well, we have no influence over the number of trees. And if we increase the number of bird's nests, that wouldn't influence the number of trees. The number of bird's nests is dependent upon the number of trees. The number of trees is not dependent upon the number of bird's nests. So we call the bird's nests the dependent, and the word we use is variable. A variable is a number that can change. And the number of trees which is fixed we can do nothing about is the independent variable. Right, and this um, is very often a value like time or gradient, say gradient of a road compared to petrol consumption. As long as we understand then that the independent variable is what we have no control over and that influences the dependent variable. So it's really the number of bird's nests we're interested in. Or we might be interested in what happens if we plant more trees um, to the number of bird's nests. Or it may be a particular species of tree. All, all of those would then be independent variables. Okay, now it's not always going to be that the number of trees is an independent variable. So for example, I have a look at the amount of rainfall in a region and the number of trees. The number of trees, um, until you get to very, very large areas, doesn't affect the rainfall. But the rainfall does affect the number of trees. So if this was rainfall, versus the number of trees per hectare, then the trees would be the dependent variable and the rainfall would be the independent variable. Right, now this simple form of graph where you have a small data set and you don't want to commit yourself to saying exactly what this is doing. For instance, it could be a straight line, it could be a curve that way, could be a curve that way, could be something like that, we just don't know. We would have to have many more data points before we could commit ourselves to drawing a line. So just by drawing those three points, what we're saying is that that's the simple data we've got, and we call that a scatter graph. Sometimes you would use a scatter graph when we've got a lot more data, um, especially when we're not sure what the relationship is. And then you might, for instance, have a whole lot of values all over the place. And just by the sheer force of the number of values, we can start to see more about the trend. 
but it's still, as you can see, it's not an accurate trend, that there is quite a lot of variation within that. But then we can start saying, well, maybe we can draw a line through there of some sort, but there's still some uncertainty. But we, there are ways of doing mathematical analyses to say what is the best line we can draw that. So that is a scatter graph, and it's used when we have a relatively small data set, and there is no relationship between data points. So for instance, um, if there's no such thing as half a tree, you've either got a tree or you haven't, and so on and so forth. So, um, and likewise, you can't have one and a half bird's nests. So there are no in-between values between bird's nests and trees. Um, so again, you would put those as individual points. Right, that then is the scatter graph, and we will now have a look at some of the other common types of graph.